this exhibit is an installation I created for Self Help Graphics for their annual Day of the Dead show, and it's titled Still I Rise. And I want to say it's more of a collaboration piece between myself and my students. My process as an artist is that of collaboration, community, and, and coming together and trying to create some type of magic at the end of it. I think that the importance of having Day of the Dead altar is like, this is something that goes beyond a skull. This goes beyond something that you buy at Target or at Party City or at Walmart. It's about honoring. It's about telling these stories of all these people that we have here in the altar. Their stories stopped, but we will continue these stories and we will continue to honor them, whether it be through the arts or whether it be through our mouths or whether it be through our writings. It would be a way for them to continue these stories to honor their legacies. In this case, we chose the a narrative base as a vehicle for them to work on and to create an installation with what was left behind from that when the pandemic first hit. So in March 2020, our students were working on their narrative bases. And in this unit, narrative bases are used as a way to tell their story. And narrative bases and pottery have been used throughout many centuries to record this story, to record their words. And so as the pandemic hit, we had to kind of evacuate the school and we had to like pack everything up. We didn't know we were coming back in two days. We, were not, we weren't sure we were gonna come back in two weeks or a month, but at the end of the day, we didn't return at all. And so what I was left with is 150 vases and they didn't finish their stories. And so my attempt to create this installation as an altar was to continue that story for them as a way for them to record this moment in time with the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement within our histories. The purpose of the totem pole is a lot of Native communities use it, especially in the Pacific Northwest, as a way to honor it. You can see some of the totems are plain white, no surface treatments, then others are marked with these black ink marks, right? Some of them are like, have a more of an age look, but that was just more of my artistic interpretation of what was happening during the pandemic. Some days were darker than others. So what I want to do with the pots is each pot is an individual pot that one student created. So what I did is I created them into more of a statue, into a totem, so they all can connect their stories together. And then at the bottom of the installation, these are all the people that we lost during the pandemic and also through Black Lives Matter movement. And so whether it be personal family, friends, to people that we saw in the news that we maybe never have met, but these are people that we want to honor as a community as well. I think this is a very pivotal point for a lot of communities to let their voices be heard. I just recently did a trip from New York to California to help my cousin move back. And in each major state, everybody's voice was amplified when what you saw on the streets, what you see the injustices happening throughout the nation, and you see these in murals, you see this in public artwork, you see this in uh, toppling of monuments, and people are wanting to speak out, and they're using arts as a weapon and as also as a tool to educate others about what's going on in our communities, whether it be local or national. A lot of my students have gone away to universities, but they're really excited that they're able to uh, present their work in a community space, such as Self Help Graphics, in Los Angeles. So we have, here we have a lot of Santa Ana kids who probably have not even stepped foot in LA or yet alone Self Help Graphics, but they're exhibiting here. So it's a milestone for them. It's something that's really important that their voice does count and that it matters and that we want to respect that they are able to create and yet tell that story. I think that our hope is like that they are the voice of what's going to happen in the future, right? We're wanting to be able to give them the tools as educators as like, you know, maybe you might not be great at this or at that, but here's a different tool that you can probably use to amplify your voice. This is a tool that you can use to help you heal, to help you to manifest what your dreams are. It's not all about just trauma and remembrance, but it's also as a way to look into the future, look as a thing of hope as well for our students. And so I'm just hoping that by them documenting these stories within their vases and using their hands, they're able to use that as a tool. My main philosophy as an educator is that you connect three things. You connect your head, you connect your heart and your hands, and that you, with those three things connected, you're able to create magic.